Okay, today begins our study with probability. So we're looking at how likely something is to happen. So some terms, an experiment is the process by which you obtain an observation. A trial is within an experiment, and that's what we do over and over and over under the same conditions. An event, when we talk about an event happening, that's an outcome or multiple outcomes that are desirable in what we're looking at from the trial. And a random experiment is one where uncertainty over which an event may occur. Um, we can have lots of different outcomes that may be equally likely. Um, several outcomes or maybe one outcome will form an event. So flipping a coin, um, flipping heads is an event, flipping tails is an event. Um, if we're rolling a die, getting a one, two, three, four, five, or six could be an event, or a combination of those. Maybe the event is rolling an even number. That would consist of three different outcomes, rolling a two, four, or a six would all be our evens. So random experiments are things where there's uncertainty over which may occur, such as rolling a dice, tossing a coin, picking cards out of a deck, or recording number of cars that pass the school gate. This P parenthesis A, the P stands for probability, A is the event that we want to occur. And the probability of any event occurring is always going to be between zero and one. Zero meaning there is zero, it's impossible to have happen. And the one means that we could have certainty that that event is going to occur. So let's look at some examples. We're rolling to die. Event A is the numbers on the upper face are equal, and event B is that both numbers are odd. So what we need to do is write down what's called a sample space. And the sample space consists of all the possible outcomes that we could have in this experiment. So for this one, we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to arrange this in a grid. So now I'm going to fill in the different outcomes that I could have. So 1 and 1, 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, 1 and 5, 1 and 6, 2 and 1. Now notice that these two events are different, or these two outcomes are different. This is a 2 on the first and a 1 on the second. This is a 1 on the first and a 2 on the second. Those are two distinct distinctly different outcomes. When you're doing problems like this that have a large sample space, it's a good idea to list all of the things that are in that. Don't try and do it all in your head. And you have to be careful when you're doing it. And don't let your mind wander. You need to focus and make sure that you actually list all of the possible things that could happen. That's where organization will help. And I'm going to fill the rest of this in. Okay, so probability of A. Well, what is event A? That's where we're looking at probability that equal values. Sometimes it's useful to actually write down the words that mean event A. So which ones are those? Sometimes a highlighter comes in handy. There are six of them. So our probability of this, probability is defined as being the number of successes divided by the number of possible outcomes. Well, how many possible outcomes are there here? There are 36 things in our sample space. And how many of them are a success? That is, how many of them are the numbers equal? There are six. So six out of 36 is our probability, and we should reduce this to one-sixth. Probability of B. B is both numbers odd. So we're going to go through again. This is going to be out of 36. Both odd. There's one, two, three. None in that row. 4, 5, 6, none in this row, 
seven, eight, nine out of 36. So this probability reduces to one out of four. Probability of A intersect B. This is the symbol for intersection. And the word that goes with that, with intersection, is and. So in other words, we want the probability that we have equal values and both odd. That is the intersection of these two. We want the things that fall into both of those groups. So of these highlighted ones, which ones are both odd? We've got one, two, three out of 36. Or one, twelve. This would be the symbol for union, and the word that goes with that is or. So the probability of A union B, or the probability of A or B, putting that with words, probability of equal or both odd. So right now I have highlighted the ones that are equal, but the ones that are both odd could work with this also. So what I'm doing is I'm adding in anything that fits that criterion. So the total here is we're taking the six that we had and adding one, two, three, four, five, six more. So this is a total of 12 out of 36 or one out of three. Now, the way we do this, what we actually did here was we took the probability that they're equal if we look at a relationship between these things. And if we add the probability of being both odd, you think, well, we might get there. But 6 out of 36 plus 9 out of 36 doesn't get me the 12 that I have here. It actually gets me 3 too many. So what we did is we subtracted the probability that they're equal and odd. So this probability that they're equal or both odd is equal to the probability of the first plus the probability of the second minus the probability of both. Putting this into mathematical notation, probability of A union B probability of A or B is equal to the probability of the first plus the probability of the second, but we have to subtract anything that got counted in both of them, which would be these three that I have circled. So we're subtracting the probability of A intersect B. So that right there is a pretty powerful formula that we do need throughout our studies with probability. Next example, we're tossing a coin this time. We're tossing it three times. Find the sample space U. All right, so U is going to equal a set. And in this set, we're going to list all the possible things that could happen. But one thing we could have is all heads. Another thing we could have is all tails. And I want you to pause the video and fill in the rest of the sample space and make sure you get all of them once you pause the video or restart the video. So we could have heads, tails, heads. We could have heads, heads, tails. We could have tails, heads, heads. And that's all the ways with one tail. We could have one head, though. We could have tail, head, head. Sorry, tail, head, tail. We could have tail, tail, head. Or we could have head, tail, tail. And you should end up having eight things in your sample set.
So now part B says, hence, write down the probability of obtaining exactly one tail. When you see the word hence in IB, that means use the stuff you just did. You must use the stuff you just did and figure this problem out. So we need the probability of obtaining exactly one tail. Well, let's go through our sample space and find the place that we have only one tail. One, two, three. So for part B, we have three out of eight as our probability. Now, let's say for a second that you made a mistake in part A. You had left one of these off, and you wrote down that the probability in part B was three-sevenths. You will earn what's called a follow-through point, and you will not be penalized in part B for that which you are already penalized for in part A. It's a nice grading thing within the International Baccalaureate.